Let's talk more about what continues in Ferguson and go in depth with our panel. Uh, first of all, our friend Armstrong Williams, the host of the Armstrong Williams Show, joining us from Washington and from Newsmax New York, Rick Unger, senior political contributor hey, for Fords.com, co-host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM. Gentlemen, uh, thank you both for taking time this morning. Um, Armstrong, Always let's happy. let's uh, let's begin with you, sir. Another night of violence reporting earlier. A real police presence, but great restraint. Reports indicate 31 people arrested. The police not firing a single shot. Michael Brown's family held a press conference yesterday. Let's listen to part of what they said and what they hope to see next in this investigation. And what is justice to you? I'm being fair. Arresting this man and making him accountable for his actions. Obviously, uh, a mother who is who is grieving the loss of her son. In that difficult situation, Armstrong, what should we all be keeping in mind? You know, you know, um, it is so critical today that communities trust law enforcement. It is the trust in law enforcement that has just dwarfed crime in places like New York and in Los Angeles. And that trust does not come easily. And while the police who gets up in the morning um, and lead their families, they have no idea if they're ever returned because they put their lives on the line every day. But to shoot someone, I don't care who they are, six times, um, it's just, I, I just think it's a little reckless, you know, and I am a big defender of, of, of law enforcement. And to me, this is not an issue of black and white. Rarely are there cases where police, bad police officers are punished for their behavior. Rarely do you see police officers getting traffic tickets. I just think that um, Giuliani in New York uh, and, and others in L.A. set an example that police officers, the, the very few, cannot be above the law. And I think the last thing that a police officer would want to do is have to shoot someone. You can wound them, but to shoot someone six times if it were your son, no matter what the crime was, J.D., you would be outraged. So that mother has every reason to be outraged. But also, it does not help when you send people in like Al Sharpton, who only incites and further divides. It doesn't help the situation. And you have to understand, it does not give people a right to break the law, to loot, steal, and kill. The president was absolutely correct. And so also, law enforcement officials are trained, uh, a part of their training, the profile of a criminal is a young black man. And let's address that. If you're living in a place in that area in St. Louis, and 80% of the residents just happen to be minorities, and they're committing the crimes, sooner or later, if you're being robbed and killed by somebody who continues to look the same, and um, you're going to begin to profile them. That's just human nature. And so how do you not profile? We just need to have a better understanding. Also, a lot of these police officers come from different jurisdictions. They may come from a place like New York or L.A. or Miami, and the standards and the demographics does not necessarily apply in a place like St. Louis, Missouri. They've got to be sensitive. They've got to be well-trained. They've got to be thoughtful. And they've got to be taught that that gun is of last resort. So listen, we've got to bring calmness to that situation. Um, the church has to play a role. Leadership has to play a role. And I think that mother's right. She should demand justice and accountability for her son. And the police department did not handle that situation the best. They left questions as to whether or not they were hiding something or not. And whether that's the case or not, I think the situation could have been handled better. Rick Unger, as we continue to follow this case, your take on what has transpired and what may be in store. Well, look, I think Armstrong did a really good job right now of summing up the situation. I don't think I could do it a whole lot better. Uh, the one thing I will point out is that, you know, Armstrong referenced the fact that when uh, somebody has six bullets fired into them, you got to wonder what's going on there. This is particularly true when uh, that person turns out to have been unarmed. So, you know, you have to make a separation there. You have the initial event that really requires a, a good, solid investigation. I'm pleased that the Justice Department has now stepped into that. I think it increases the odds of getting to the right conclusion. Um, I think that you have to separate that, though, from what's happened since then. 
And, you know, I saw Congressman Cleaver on television this morning, and he said something I think was one of the best things I've heard since this all began. He said he was mayor of a town in Missouri that experienced a similar situation after the L.A. riots had begun. And he said, you know, whenever we got it right, it was almost by accident because you don't really know what to do in this kind of a scenario. We all recognize that you've got honest, legitimate, concerned people out there who are protesting as is their right. But mixed among them is another element of people who are, are bent on, on using the circumstance uh, for criminal activity. That's not going to help anything, and especially when we see them coming from other places to join into that. So, look, this is just a reality that we unfortunately see, it seems like, almost every year now. I have sympathy for the police who don't always know the right way to go about it. I would, however, suggest that there were mistakes made here, and you'd like to think that a community police force would examine what's happened prior what's happened in L.A., what's happened in other cities, to get a sense of what has a better chance of working and what doesn't. Clearly what they started with was not working. It was not the best way to go. And now we hope that this will come to an end sooner rather than later so we can get on to a real investigation. Armstrong, we just heard uh, Rick mention the fact that uh, he welcomes the uh, involvement of the Justice Department. Of course, yesterday President Obama announced that he'd be sending Attorney General Eric Holder to Ferguson. Will the presence of the Attorney General be a help or a hindrance? Look, um, J.D., uh, there's just so many sensitivities. Uh, I do think that the President, uh, as President, should step in, but I think it's also ridiculous for somebody to assume just because he happens to be a President who's black, he should be more sensitive and more understanding to this situation. No. Uh, this is a situation that has been brewing for a very long time. If you look at the prosecutor there in that area, uh, very rarely do they ever side against police in some of the most egregious of situations. It's much deeper. It, it's the prosecutor. It's the system that's in place. And then you also have to look at the demographics. You talk about the fact that the police force is 90% white and it's not representative of the people in that community. But look, these are the same people who have the right to vote, have the right to empowerment, they go to the polls, they don't vote, they decide not to change the police force, even when they're given the opportunity to become law officers of the law, they have no interest in it. So everybody has a role to play, to yeah, hold okay. the mayor accountable, to hold the police affordable, but people in that community, if you don't like your mayor, mayor if you control 80% of the vote, then change the system and make it representative of you. So Rick, uh, uh, you hear Armstrong there calling for a direct involvement at the ballot box, but you, you still believe that the presence of uh, General Holder will be a help? Well, I don't, I don't, I, Armstrong's right. There's no better way to solve a problem than at the ballot box, clearly. But yeah, I really do think it's gonna be a help because you've got somebody high up on the ground overseeing this investigation. One thing I do want to point out that Armstrong put his finger on, but I want to go just a shade deeper, this prosecutor in this area. You know, you talk about the mistakes that, that have been made. I saw something happen that I honestly don't think I've ever seen before. When Governor Nixon decided to replace the, the local police force with the state highway patrol, and, and I think we all agree by and large that's turned out to be one of the better moves, this prosecutor actually publicly denounced the governor saying that he was breaking the law and removing the police force and, and just going crazy about this. Prosecutors not only don't do that, they can't do that. How are you going to look at this as an impartial prosecutor when he makes a statement like that? It just stunned me. It stunned a lot of my Republican friends who are lawyers. All of us were like, what? So you've got a situation there that, that is not gonna, gonna help bring any measure of confidence to this community when a prosecutor speaks out like that. We're gonna take a break, but uh, come back and resume this discussion. And one of the topics we will go to when we come back is the topic that is the subject of our poll today at Newsmax.com. Senator Rand Paul last week had criticism of the notion of militarizing police forces. He says we need to demilitarize the police. So our poll question for you today is Rand Paul right? Are the Ferguson police over militarized? And to vote there, you can go to newsmax.com slash poll. In the meantime, as I mentioned, both Armstrong Williams and 
And uh, Rick Unger will hang around to talk more about this important subject. All that and more straight ahead here on America's Forum. So please stay with us.